Hey there, I'm Gilselect and in this tutorial I'm gonna teach you how to create your first platform game using GameMaker. Before I dive in, let me introduce myself. I've been using GameMaker since I was a kid and I developed several games like Donut to be Seen, Starboy Adventures and more recently Moonleap, which won the Notice Me Game Gen and ended up becoming a full-fledged game that I'm really proud of. But enough about me. Let's create a game. It's gonna be a super simple game, where you have to dodge spikes and reach the flag. Even though it's simple, it will be a great introduction to Game Maker. We will create a new Blink project. I will call mine... Tiny Game. And this is what you see once you create your project. There is quite a lot to click around here, but don't worry. Right now, I want you to focus on the Asset Browser, which is on the right side of the screen. This is where all the resources of your game will be, like sprites, sounds and objects. For this project, we will only use three, sprites, objects and rooms. You can delete some of these folders if you want, which is what I'm going to do here. First, let's talk about sprites, which are basically the images in your game. They represent your character, enemies, items and even the background. Now. Object. Here we're talking about code. This is where you decide what happens when the character touches an enemy, picks up an item, advances to the next level, and so on. Speaking of levels, in rooms, you place the objects of your level, like the ground for your character to walk on, where enemies and items will be, and everything else. But right now, let's work on the sprites. There are several ways to create an asset, but right now, I will click on the empty space, go to Assets, and select Create Sprite. It will show up here and I will name it S Player. You can name it whatever you want, but I usually go with S Player for the player sprite. You can create your sprite here, and I recommend that you create your own, but for this video, I already prepared mine. I'm going to click Import and import my sprites into the game. Let's create more sprites. You can right click on sprites and select create sprite as well. I will create a sprite for the item, which will be the goal of the level. Let's call it S flag. Now I'm going to import the sprite I made for the flag. And now for the spikes. And for the ground sprite. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing, you can draw whatever you want here. To work on an asset, just double click it. That goes for all the assets in the game. Before we move on to objects, you might have noticed the origin point here set to 00, zero and that means the origin point of your sprite is on the top left corner, we will change that. We will create one object for each sprite we made. Let's click create object, let's name this one O player and put a sprite on that object. This area here on the right is the events of your object. This is where the code goes. What happens to the object when it's created, destroyed, at the end of the game, and more. But I won't mess with them now. I will just create the other object. We will create an object for the ground, O solid, and assign the ground sprite to it. I will do the same for O flag and O spike. Now up to rooms. Let's double click room 1. Double clicking it will show this black grid, which is your level. I'm gonna hold out and drag this onto the screen. You may have noticed that your object is small, and that's because the room is very big. I will click on my room on the asset browser and change that in the room settings, on the bottom left corner of the screen. Here you can change the size of the room. I will put 320 and 180. I can now adjust the zoom here, nice. Now we can place objects on the screen by holding out and dragging them onto the level. You might notice the object snipes on a grid here. I find this grid too big, so I'll change it to 16 by 16 pixels. Now we can place the ground. Some spikes here, a little flag here. 
and nice now we can hit play and yeah everything's tiny and we can do anything let's fix that by writing some code we will go to the workspace which we can navigate using the middle mouse button for the programming part of this game i will use gml code so let's add and create event the code inside create will happen as soon as this object is created which in your case is when the game is opened if a window pops up on your screen asking if you want to use gml code or gml visual choose gml code we won't be using the visual language of GameMaker. So, let's dive in. We'll write a function to increase the size of the game window. It's a function called window set size. And here we will type in the horizontal and the vertical size we want. I want a game window to be 720p. This function is built into GameMaker, and if you don't know how it works, just click it with the middle mouse button. I will also create two variables here, one for the horizontal speed and one for the vertical speed. I will set both to zero. A variable is something we can name and use to store a value for later use. For example, I could create a variable called coins to store the number of coins the character collects or a health variable to count the character's health. So let's work on the character's movement. Here I will add an step event, which is an event that, unlike create, happens every frame of the game. This is where we will put the player's movement code. So, let's go! If I press the left key, I want to move one pixel to the left. If I press the right key, it moves one pixel to the right. So, I will write. If keyboard check VK left, this code means if I press the left key, this is what will happen this part here inside the code let's do the same for the right key okay let's write something inside this space here i write xsp equals minus one for left and xsp equals plus one for right you might be thinking why xsp why ysp this is because they represent the speed of the x and y coordinates of this object. Every time I press left, I decrease x, every time I press right, I increase x, and so on. Notice that if you go to the room and double-click on the character, you see it has these x and y values, which are its coordinates. If I leave this object here, the x will be 0 and the i will be 0. If I move it down, the i increases. If I move it right, x goes up, if I move it left, x goes down. The level is like a Cartesian plane, and in the code, we manipulate the coordinates to make the character move. But let's go back to the code, because as it is, we can do nothing. To make it move and collide with the ground, we have the function move and collide. XSP, YSP, O solid, which is the ground. This is a game maker function which allows your character to move and collide with the ground. Now click on play to run the game and... Oh, that's better. The window is bigger, we can move your character, but it doesn't jump and it's floating. That's because we haven't added gravity yet, so let's code that. The way we implement gravity is by applying a vertical force that pushes your character down as long it's not standing on the ground. When it's on the ground, the vertical speed will be zero. To do that, we will create this force by adding YSP plus equals 0 0.1. I also wrote XSP equals zero here, because when the player isn't pressing left or right, I want them to remain still. But not just that. We need to check if the character is on the ground, because it should only be able to jump when it's touching the ground. Give me make us a function for that. So you write if place meeting x y plus one o solid inside your code. To see an explanation of this function, just click it with the middle mouse button. What it's doing here is checking if the character is one pixel above the ground. The code inside this will only happen if the player is on the ground. So I'm gonna put here. YSP equals zero. 
which will set the character's vertical speed to zero. And we'll put the character's jump code here, so the player can only jump when it's touching the ground. If keyboard check VK up, YSP equals minus two. Okay, now let's test it. Look at that, it's, it's almost a game already. We just need to make the player die and advance to the next level. So let's set up some collisions. You already know that placing reading checks for collisions. So let's write some collision codes for the flag and the spike. I wrote a note here, this code isn't read by GameMaker, it's just for my organization process. So let's go! Inside the collision with the flag, I will write a code to move to the next level. It's a code that goes to the next room on the list, and its name is Room Guru Next. And here, for the spike, I will reset the room with room restart. Room restart. If we hit play now, you see everything is working fine. We can move around and... I die. Nice. Everything is working great, but when we reach the end, the game crashes. That's because we haven't made a next level yet. Before making the next level, the game still looks a bit ugly. So, I will create a sprite for the background. It will be a simple sprite, size 32 by 32. And it's gonna be that. White and gray. You will understand why in a moment. I will name it S back. I will click on the room. Let's go to the layers and choose the background layer. Clicking here on the background, I will select a sprite. I will make it repeat horizontally and vertically. And here you can change the color of the sprite. I will click color and pick a nice one. Down here there are filters and effects which are ready-made effects you can apply to your layer. And you know, just to make it a bit prettier, I will add the underwater effect. Why not? It looks quite nice. Feel free to play around and let's test it. Nice! There is only one level, so let's go! Let's make a next level. Let's go to rooms, right click on the room we already have, and duplicate it. I will rename it to room 2. And here I will add more spikes, put the flag here, change its background, and there, a new level. I will create a few more so we can have a proper game, and I will be right back. There you have it. This is a very simple game, which I made mainly to introduce Game Maker to you. Many things I did here weren't the most optimized, but I did them in the simplest, most understandable way. I hope this video helped you in some way. I hope you can keep working on your projects. And if you want to, you can even keep working on this game. Add animations for this character, enemies, new mechanics, and anything else you can think of. If you have any questions, suggestions, want more videos like this one or anything else, leave a comment below. If you want to get in touch with me, you can find me on social media as Uselect and I hope you liked this tutorial. Don't forget to leave a like, share with your friends and that's it, bye!